the heart transplant began. As his heart was taken out, his soul cried out in agony on the outside. The man was in trouble, while his girlfriend stood nearby, indifferent to it all. Sorry, baby. He really loved you, Sam. He didn't even know me, Jack. Tears welled up in the man's eyes, as he remembered the loving and adorable girlfriend he used to have. Why did she change so drastically? Tom couldn't understand. He was handsome and well-educated, making him the perfect choice for a boyfriend. But growing up with a strong and controlling mother, he didn't dare tell her that he was dating her female secretary. Jenny, their relationship was stable and sweet, except for always having to hide from his mother. One day, Jenny couldn't bear it any longer, and forced Tom to confront his mother. He mustered up the courage and confronted his mother that night. She was furious, scolding herself for not knowing about this huge hidden danger. Tom had a brighter future ahead and couldn't let it be ruined by this woman. He chose to take control of his own life and walked away with Jenny. As they left their home, Tom proposed to Jenny right on the doorstep, and they had a simple wedding witnessed by a priest and their good friend Jack. Just then, some good news arrived they had found a matching heart for Tom. It turned out he had a congenital heart condition, and his mother had found an expert in the field to convince him to have the heart transplant, even though it came with significant risks. But Tom refused and insisted on having Jack perform the surgery. Hours later, as the matched heart was about to arrive at the hospital, Tom was pushed into the operating room. An unfamiliar anesthetist walked in, and the other doctors were puzzled. He explained that the previous anesthetist fell in, so he was there to cover the shift. Hearing this, the doctors exchanged anxious glances. The players may have changed, but the game is still the same. The surgery began, and Tom gradually closed his eyes, feeling his consciousness slipping away. However, he remained strangely aware of the doctors preparing his body for surgery. Despite his best efforts to stop it, Tom couldn't move a muscle, not even his eyelids. Okay, I'm, I'm still awake. Just stop. Um, come on, look at the machines. All right, I'm not under yet. Look at the fucking okay. monitors. He sensed that something was about to happen, but was powerless to intervene. Jack picked up the surgical knife, and the operation was about to begin. The scalpel pressed against his skin, and the sharp blade sliced through his body. It was excruciatingly painful, but he couldn't scream or move. As if that wasn't enough, the next step involved sewing through his ribcage. He endured the intense pain, trying to distract himself by recalling precious memories with his girlfriend. The memories offered some relief from the torment. To his surprise, Jack proceeded to use instruments to stretch his chest cavity to the limit. Tom felt like he was fading away, but somehow, he managed to hold on until the mid-surgery break when the anesthetist stepped outside for fresh air. This guy's been watching everything I do. Oh, come on, Jack. It's like he's been sent here to spy on us. I think they found out that we've been pushing Clay down the donor. Be known to him, all the doctors in the operating room knew each other and had conspired to harm him. They planned to let Tom die on the surgical table and then stage it as a medical accident. Upon hearing this shocking revelation, Tom couldn't remain calm any longer. How could his good friend plot against him? He had trusted Jack so much, fueled by anger. Tom took a deep breath and pulled out the breathing tube, but to his surprise, his soul stood up from the operating table while his physical body lay still. He saw Jack, his supposed friend, and coincidentally spotted Jenny heading toward the operating room. Tom desperately sought her help, revealing the conspiracy to murder him. Shockingly, Jenny turned out to be part of the plot as well. She was only there to ensure that everything went according to plan. At this point, Jack began to waver, fearing the consequences of his actions. Tom remembered seeing a photo of Jenny with a group of medical staff in Jack's office. They were all colleagues who had covered up three medical accidents and incurred massive debts. Jenny had been tasked with seducing a wealthy young man Tom, marrying him, and then getting Jack close to him to convince him to have the heart transplant done by Jack. The plan was to put Tom in a life-threatening situation during the surgery. And once he passed away, Jenny would inherit his wealth and use it to clear everyone's debts. Sitting outside the operating room, Tom regretted his past disagreements with his mother and how naive he had been. He realized his mistakes, but it was too late now. I'm so sorry. Inside the operating room, under Jenny's watchful eyes, the surgery continued, and the poison heart was about to be transplanted into Tom's chest. The chest was cut open, and Tom woke up, his consciousness drifting in an otherworldly state. He keenly felt his heart being removed. But his girlfriend, one of the main culprits in his attempted murder, stood nearby. Coldly observing, Tom couldn't help but shed tears, but no one noticed. The new heart was ready, but it had been injected with poison. Once placed into Tom's chest, it would stop beating immediately. Tom felt utterly hopeless as it so wandered, drawn to a place he longed to be, skipping past the stairs where he had planned to propose to Jenny. Tom found himself on a familiar sofa, waiting for all the light to fade away. Bit by bit, at that moment, the anesthetist returned to the operating room, and the doctors appeared to be panicking, trying to save the heart that had stopped beating. However, they all knew the truth. As clear as a mirror, after the surgery, Jack approached Tom's mother. The organ failed and I am so sorry. You failed, my son. He 
was devastated and crying. The anesthetist comforted her and asked if she wanted the life support removed. I don't understand. He's alive? Yes. Tom was now relying on an extracorporeal membrane oxygenation machine, heading on to life. If they replaced his heart now, he might have a chance to survive. Just as Tom's world seemed to plunge into darkness, his mother suddenly appeared, rekindling a glimmer of hope. Tom had reacted, yet when his mother told him they didn't have much time, she had realized something was off with Jenny. So she checked her back, finding out her true identity. There was also a guy who recognized Jenny, claiming she looked familiar. Besides, Jenny accidentally revealed her knowledge of vending machines and recognized that the anesthetist wasn't from that hospital. It wasn't hard for Tom's mother to deduce that Jenny had worked at the hospital before. Panicked and pressed for time, Tom's mother immediately called the expert doctor, not having the chance to investigate further. The doctor arrived promptly after her death and arranged the surgery. Jack, left puzzled, was warned by the expert that the police were on their way. He had to leave and not interface with the rescue effort. He intended to replace Tom's heart with his mother's. Tom felt overwhelming guilt. Despite the successful heart transplant, he experienced rejection symptoms due to the heart's high cost. He blamed himself for trusting the wrong people, which led to not only his own loss, but also the sacrifice of his mother, feeling there was no way out. Do it yourself, Clay. You're strong. I'm not him. Try, Mom. Really, I did, but I'm just not him. I don't want you to be. But then, Tom's mother shared a memory with him, revealing the truth about his father. He wasn't the good person Tom had imagined. He had often abused them. There was even a time when he had attempted to hurt Tom, and in an act of self-defense, Tom's mother accidentally killed him. The memory was so traumatic that Tom's mind had automatically deleted it, and he had idealized his father as a role model for his life. You're a hundred times the man he was. This revelation reignited Tom's will to live. With his mother's heart beating within him, he found renewed strength and determination. On the other side, the police soon arrived, and Jenny tried to escape. However, Jack was cautious, and when everyone hesitated, Jenny personally handed him the poison needle, leaving her fingerprints behind. Realizing her true nature, Jack couldn't bring himself to act, although he almost couldn't do it. He recognized her as the most poisonous woman, even more deadly than he had thought. At last, they all faced the consequences of their actions. As the law caught up with them, 